Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense, and today I've got a top 10 list for you. I'm going over Mugler fragrances, in particular the Amen line. I'm going to give you guys my top 10 favorite Amen fragrances. This is a video that's been done before by other YouTubers, of course. It's a very popular video topic as far as top 10 lines go from particular fragrance houses. It's one that I've wanted to do for a long time, and what's funny is I actually did this list up, and the day after I made the list up, Cam from Carolina Fragrance Reviews did something similar. So I had to call him on the phone and be like, dude, why are you reading my mind for? So yes, guys, 10 Amen fragrances, my personal favorites. Let's jump into this. Before we get started in the official top 10, I need to let you guys know that there are going to be a few fragrances that I leave out. I'm going to give you guys the reason why. And also, this top 10 list is not what I consider to be the most important of the Amen line. So this is not the most historically significant Amen fragrances from 10 to 1. It's just as I'm sitting here today in this chair talking to you guys, this is where I'd rank them in terms of which ones I would rather wear. So just my personal favorites as of this video, essentially. Like I said, there are going to be some fragrances that are left out. I know, it's very sad. And I'm gonna go over those with you here really quickly and let you know why these fragrances are being left out. First off, this one, Amen, Taste of Fragrance. So this is one that a lot of you out there might even not know, might not realize that this existed. This is a flanker to the original Amen, of course, I guess actually all of these are. Anyway, this one is basically just taking Amen and then adding a chili pepper note to it, which is why it's Taste of Fragrance, because there is a gourmand note that's been added. There were, I believe, four Taste of Fragrance fragrances released. This is the only one that was done for men. And this one I'm not including because it's one that a lot of guys are not going to recognize immediately as a flanker. Typically with these Amen flankers, it's pure whatever, malt, energy, wood, etc. This one is just taste of fragrance. And so I'm not including it for that reason. It's one that a lot of guys are not gonna really know. Though personally, I do think that it's pretty cool. I like that chili pepper twist uh, and my wife absolutely hates it. She thinks it sucks. I'm also not including this one, Ultra Zest. The reason I'm not including Ultra Zest is because it's discontinued and if you want to pick this up, it's going to run you a lot of money nowadays. Prices for this fragrance have gotten exorbitant. Some people are asking for over $200 for a bottle of Ultra Zest on eBay. And you'll see it pop up in Facebook groups where people are asking huge sums there as well. We'll talk a little bit about Amen in general, but one of the common themes you're going to find in Amen fragrances is the note of patchouli. That's a note that you're going to find pretty much across all of these fragrances. This one does have a patchouli note, but it's not really known for patchouli. This one is more known for orange and tangerine, which I'm not really a surprise, right? I mean, check out the color of the bottle. A lot of people compare it to the smell of a creamsicle. And this one would have easily cracked the top five had I included it. It's just where this is so hard to find nowadays. If you don't already have it, you're probably not gonna get it unless Mugler brings it back out. I can't sit here and tell any of you guys that it's worth the crazy prices that some people are asking for that now. And then last up is this one, B-Men. And this is actually really cool because it's a metal case. And actually the atomizer on this metal case is so much better than the Amen atomizers. These atomizers, these are some of the worst in the game. These are terrible. A lot of people will actually do what I've done with my Ultra Zest one and they'll cut right here. That way you can press down much easier and get a better spray. Anyway, back to B Men. This one does have patchouli. So it has that in common with A Men. It's also got licorice, anise, and spices as some of the notes. The reason this one is not included is because it's B Men, not A Men. And this list is based off of A Men and A Men flankers. So B-Men did not make the list, but I wanted to bring it up. Now, we're gonna finally start talking about the top 10. Some of these fragrances are easier to find than others right now. 
Some of these fragrances, even going back a year or two, you could find very cheaply, but now they're not at discounters as much anymore and they're getting harder to find. And I'll let you know as I go through each one of these, how easy or how hard they are to find as of this video at discounters. So we're gonna start this off with number 10. This is the one that I think I would like to wear the least out of all of these fragrances. Now, even though this fragrance is at number 10, I don't think it's a bad fragrance. I don't smell this and go like, oh, terrible. Nobody should ever wear that, it's trash. All of these are good, it's just they're differing levels of good. Some of them are fantastic and others are just okay. And this one, being at number 10, is one I consider okay. It's this one right here, Pure Coffee. And I actually wore this fairly recently in a weekly rotation. Now, like I said, patchouli, that's gonna be one of the common themes here. Patchouli, patchouli, patchouli in each one of these fragrances. What do you think Pure Coffee has to set it apart? Did you guess coffee? You guessed correctly, good job. The coffee here though is not as prominent as I would like and it just doesn't come across as inspired or original as some of the other Amen flankers. So when you compare it up against some of these other fragrances, it just doesn't hold quite as much of a candle. It doesn't set itself apart, like I said. To me, it is not something that's worth owning unless you are a big Mugler collector, because there are other fragrances that you can get from this line that will work better in the same situations that this one will. Now, all that being said, it is not a bad fragrance. It does not smell bad. It's just for me, it's at number 10. Pure Coffee as of right now, you can find pretty easily at discounters. There have been times in the past that it has not been at discounters, but as of this video, it is readily available at discounters, so that one is not hard to find. That takes us to number nine, of course, and this is the newest of the bunch. It's one that I reviewed not that long ago, Amen Ultimate. Now, my wife does like this fragrance a good amount. It's just, for me personally, when I put it up against some of these other ones, I'd rather go with some of the more old school in the line, which they're not really all that old school, but you know what I mean. This one has notes of mochaccino, balsam fir, and cedar, along with, of course, patchouli. And this one, the coffee note comes across a lot sweeter and creamier than in pure coffee, the one that I talked about before. This one also is actually one of my wife's uh, favorites of the whole bunch. So even though I put this one down at number nine, she would probably have it in the top five. As I said, I did a review on that one not very long ago, so you can check that review out if you want more information on Amen Ultimate. I know that some people have not been impressed by it and think that it's a terrible release. I don't think that it's terrible, but I do wish that I had a little more oomph. Ultimately, what it comes across to me as is uh, bits of wood and then a, a sweetened coffee, a very very sweet coffee. Mugler Amen Ultimate is available on Mugler's website, so you can pick this one up there. It's not yet at discounters as of this video, but I imagine it won't be long before it is. That one, also easy to find. That's gonna take me to number eight. Uh, now this one, some people may not be happy that I've placed it at number eight, but in terms of what I'd rather wear nowadays, it's where the fragrance ends up. The original. Amen. It has uh, caramel, coffee, patchouli, vanilla as some of the notes in the fragrance. And Amen is a fragrance that for some people really has to grow on you. It's strong, it projects, it lasts, it's loud. If you spray this on really heavily and you've never worn this fragrance before, you might be taken aback a little bit. Some people actually have compared Amen to smelling, I think, like uh, tar. Like some people really can't jive with it. To me though, classic fragrance, I actually like that it's loud, I like that it's out there, I enjoy the patchouli, I enjoy the gourmand notes that are in here. It set in motion all of these fragrances that came after it, so it really is a modern classic scent. And there are some of these fragrances that smell closer to Amen than others, for example, Pure Coffee smells similar to Amen, you can pick up the DNA and then uh, there's another one I'll talk about here in a little bit that also has that Amen DNA much stronger than some of the other fragrances. I like the fragrance. I think that it's one that if you have a collection, you should definitely own the fragrance. But as far as what I want to wear, some of these other ones beat it out. The original Amen, you can find this everywhere. You can find this on Amazon, you can find this on eBay, you can find this at discounters, you can find this on Mugler's website. This one of the bunch, the easiest to find. 
And number seven is this one, Pure Energy. It's got juniper, mint, and sequoia as some of the notes. Uh, this was originally released as Pure Shot. It was the same bottle, same fragrance, just a different name. And it turns out that Pure Shot was actually a terrible name for this fragrance because the original face of this fragrance was Oscar Pistorius, who is the uh, Olympian Blade Runner. He, he had no lower part of his legs. Uh, who ended up shooting and killing his girlfriend, and uh, the name was changed <laughs> to Pure Energy. It's probably a good idea. Pure Shot, just really poor choice. This one is very different than the others in this line because this is through and through a spring summertime fragrance. It goes for uh, more of a brisk kind of feeling, a very fresh feeling. Now, Ultra Zest that I talked about before, you know, that's orange creamsicle. You could definitely wear that in warmer weather, but this is more what you think of as a fresh, clean, brisk, uplifting, uh, refreshing, warm weather kind of scent. Obviously, that's because of that combination of juniper and mint. There's also patchouli in here, though it's not gonna be anywhere near as heavy as in Amen or Pure Coffee or some of the others in this line. And then you've got Sequoia as well, so it's more just uh, kind of a, I don't mean it in a bad way, but like a synthetic woody base. Pure Energy is an easy fragrance to pull off. Uh, the main thing with that fragrance though is it may not be as memorable as some of the others in this lineup. Pure Energy, you can find this at discounters as of right now very easily, though as I mentioned before, it may come across on those websites as Pure Shot. Understand if it says Pure Shot, it is Pure Energy, it's the same thing. That takes me to number six, and this one in my mind is kind of linked to Ultra Zest a little bit, not that the fragrances are the same, uh, it's probably just because of the name, the way that it is named as compared to some of the others, and also how the bottle is done up, but it's this one, Crypto Mint. So what I mean is this one is orange on orange, this one is green on green. They both have that kind of uh, almost ice creamy like coloration, and neither one of them is pure whatever. Ultra Zest, Crypto Mint. They kind of stand apart from all the other pure whatever fragrances. The main notes that you're gonna pick up in this are going to be mint and chocolate, along with, of course, the patchouli. This one comes across to me kind of like a, a chocolate mint, like an Andes chocolate mint. Uh, some people have also compared it to like a mint ice cream, like a chocolate mint ice cream. And that is a pretty good description of how that one comes across. Crypto Mint, when it was released, was viewed as kind of a so-so release. A lot of people weren't as pumped up about that one as some of the others in the line. Uh, to me, it's not as easy to wear as some of the other fragrances in the line. Some of these in cooler weather, you can pull off in lots of different situations. Crypto Mint has to be when I'm in that mood for a mint chocolate fragrance. It is a good release though, and for me, that one comes in number six. Crypto Mint, you can find this as of this video readily at discounters. This is an easy one to find as well. It's gonna take me to number five. It's this one, Pure Leather. Now this one gets compared to the original Amen. So there's a lot of the original Amen DNA in Pure Leather. The main difference here is this one, of course, has a leather note. Very good. It's, it's difficult sometimes to know what's in these fragrances. So that one has a very noticeable leather. You can pick that up right away in the top and it stays for the life of the fragrance off my skin. It's like leather, amen. If you wanna make it super simplistic and boil down, amen plus leather. Now, pure leather, once upon a time, you could find a discounter so easily. You could find it cheaper than any other fragrance in this list. I believe that when I picked this up, I paid under 30 bucks for a 100 ml still sealed bottle of pure leather. As of this video though, it's not at any discounters. At least not the ones that I checked, the big ones out there, your fragrance nets, fragrance sexes, you know the drill. It was on Amazon, but the price was jacked up as compared to what you could get it for just a couple years ago. I'm a sucker for leather fragrances, so that's why that one's at number five. Um, I do think though that there's a bit of a gap from that one and the last four. Number four is this one, Pure Tonka. Now this one, of course, plays off of the note as Tonka. 
as the focal point of the scent. There's also coffee in here. There's also cacao or chocolate and patchouli. So this one is going to be for your gourmand lovers out there. Really nice, creamy, sweet, rich, and deep. This one is one that my wife loves, one of her favorites of the whole bunch. Uh, again, Atomizer is trash. It actually might be worse on this one than the other fragrances in the line. I'm not sure why that is. Maybe it's the type of uh, rubber that they're using here, but this Atomizer sucks. You can find this at Mugler's website. So it is available there. Obviously it's gonna be full retail if you pick this up from their website. At discounters, it kind of comes and goes. It'll be there, then it'll sell out, and it won't be there for months, and it'll pop back up again. As of this video, I don't believe that it's at any of the big discounters, but you can find it on Mugler's website, so uh, you can find it there if all else fails. And I know they're not the same fragrance, but personally might wear them in similar situations given the sweetness of the mochaccino, but I just think that if you put these up against each other, this one, that tonka, the coffee, the vanilla, the chocolate, it just works better than Amen Ultimate does because this one is ultimately centered around that sweet mochaccino, which is obviously coffee. And uh, I kind of, you know, put them up against each other when I was making this list and it was like, well, your tonka is just better. And that's why this one is up at number four and the other is all the way down toward the bottom. Again though, all these fragrances are good, just different levels of good. We're in the top three, and it may not be a surprise because a lot of times these three are considered the best of the bunch, and for me, that is the case. Number three is going to be this one, Pure Wood. This one, unfortunately, as of this video, not on Mugler's website, not on discounters. It is available on Amazon, but that price on Amazon is higher than what I paid when I picked this bottle up. This one comes with a little wood design on the bottle, kind of like pure leather, comes with a little leather design on the bottle. And this one introduces, of course, wood, more specifically the note of oak. There's also coffee, vanilla, and uh, patchouli in here, so not a big surprise there. But this does come across like a very nice, woodsy fragrance, actually one of the better designer fragrances based around the note of wood or the idea of wood. For me personally, Pure Wood destroys all the D-squared fragrances that were based upon wood. Uh, this one just has more character, more umph, more depth to it. Oftentimes, people would say Pure Wood was overlooked because it didn't get as much hype as the fragrances coming after this one, and that may be the case, but Pure Wood is, in my opinion, one of the best that's ever come out of the Amen line, even if it didn't get as much hype as the next two coming up. Great fragrance, especially in springtime or fall time, pure wood. Now we've come up to the top two, and this is probably no surprise. If you guys know the Amen line, I'd wager you know what's coming up next. At number two is this one, pure malt. I love pure malt. Now there's also a release called Pure Malt Creation. That one's more difficult to find and that's the reason it's not in this list. I'm just talking about Pure Malt here. As of this video, you can find Pure Malt at discounters. So if you want to pick this up, it is available there. It's got malt, it's got fruit, whiskey, peat. So this one is going to be a fruity, a boozy kind of scent. Rich, a little bit syrupy, fantastic for cold weather. And I think in the top two here for most people, their top two ends up being the same as mine, just maybe flip-flopped. These two are heavy hitters. And I feel like if you're a fan of Mugler, if you're a fan of the Amen line, you've gotta at least smell these two fragrances. And in my opinion, you've gotta own them because these two are just off the chain. Both compliment getters, Pure Malt and the next one, which you probably already know about. Wonderful fragrances, as I said, in cool weather. Performance is there. Uh, they're not off-putting at all. It's just, they're, they're near modern masterpieces or modern classics. So this one, Pure Malt, that's gonna be if you want something that's fruity, boozy, sweet. The next one is if you want something that's also fruity, sweet, but instead of boozy, you wanna go tobacco. It's this one, Pure 
Havan. Tobacco, honey, vanilla, cacao. This one and this one, pure Havan, pure malt. To me, you've gotta kinda of lump these in together. They're both so freaking good. <laughs> it's just, like I said, one of them leans a more boozy side of things or leans on the more boozy side of things. The other one leans more on the sweet tobacco side of things. Pure Havan, you've heard people talk about it as a pipe tobacco. Maybe some people have said it's a cherry tobacco. It is ultimately a sweet tobacco scent. I've talked about it so much on this channel. It's been in my most complimented lists. It's made top 10 lists. I've worn it to the office uh, over and over and over through the years because it just works so well. It's not a fragrance you would think of as an office fragrance necessarily, but put a few sprays of that on, go into the office, especially in cooler weather, and people just love it, at least in my situation. People have come up and been like, what are you wearing? It smells so good. And just, you know, compliment me left and right with this one. It's a fantastic scent. According to uh, Amen, it's an oriental tobacco vigorous scent because this particular bottle is a tester and on the back it's got uh, some of the things that they, you know, put on here to pitch the fragrance to you. Fresh tobacco leaves, honeyed tobacco accord, patchouli, bitter cocoa. It's great. And there we go. My top 10 Amen fragrances as of these video, the top 10 that I would like to wear. Not a surprise uh, in the top two, I would imagine. A lot of you knew that was coming. Pure Wood, Pure Tonka, those are right behind. These two, I think, personally, are like up here on a pedestal. And then uh, Pure Wood and Pure Tonka, just a little bit below that, kind of lumped in together, a little bit of a bigger gap. And then the next uh, six fragrances after that. Ultra Zest probably would have come in at number five or number four had I included that. So there we go, guys, my top 10 Amen fragrances. I know the video ran long, but there was a lot to talk about, a lot to break down. In the comments below, let me know what your favorites are from this line. Are you one of the guys out there, kind of like me, who views Havan and Malt as basically the standard bearers of this line? Or do you maybe like one of the other ones, one that was a little lower on my list? As always, guys, thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for all your support, and I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.